Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV, and we continue our look at films set in San Francisco with the 1978 science fiction thriller Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The film, which stars Donald Sutherland and Brooke Adams and has a memorable appearance by Leonard Nimoy, is actually a remake of an earlier 1956 movie. This earlier version was set in a small town in California and follows the stories of a plant-like creature from outer space whose spores develop into pods that can replicate the body and memories of humans, replacing the original inhabitants of the town with the emotionless duplicates. The 1978 remake follows the same premise, with the same extraterrestrial spores and pods that replace humans with duplicates, but reset in San Francisco. The scale of the city and the implications of all of its inhabitants replaced by beings that look like us but don't think or behave like us is all the more chilling. Indeed, the idea of an outside infectious agent spreading through the people of the city takes on a new dimension as we experience the COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, let's walk through many of the familiar locations featured in this movie. As the pods drift down to Earth, they alight at a familiar location in San Francisco, Lafayette Park. A beautiful little park located at a high point in the city's Pacific Heights district, it has a distinctive layout, tree covering, and an old decorative apartment building located within its square. From here, Elizabeth Driscoll fatefully takes one of the pods back to her apartment at 720 Steiner Street near Alamo Square. This just happens to be one of the famous painted ladies. The next scene introduces health inspector Matthew Bunnell, played by Donald Sutherland, as he busts a restaurant for a health code violation. The setting for the restaurant was the club Bimbo's in North Beach, which we also noted as a location in the famous Bullet Car Chase. We next go to San Francisco's instantly recognizable Civic Center, where Elizabeth passes a banjo-playing busker in front of the iconic City Hall. She is en route to the Department of Public Health at 101 Grove Street, where both she and Matthew work. This is the actual City Health Department. The interior scenes are shot in the building as well, with Matthew's office overlooking City Hall. The next locations of particular interest come during Elizabeth's flashback, relaying her concerns to Matthew about her partner Jeffrey, who has clearly been converted by the pods. She follows him to Maritime Plaza, where we see her on one of the walkways over Washington Street to the elevated courtyards and then on the escalators in the lobby leading down to street level. Maritime Plaza still exists and is a favorite place of mine that has preserved this austere 1960s architecture, elevated landscaping, and sculptures. I used to enjoy going there to lunch when I worked on Market Street or to do photography of the art and architecture. While telling this story, the pair are driving through the Tenderloin District of the city. We see them drive discontinuously along Golden Gate Avenue and then jump to Leavenworth and Eddy Streets, where a man jumps out at them and screams. Oh my God! Lock the door! Lock the door! They're coming! They're coming! Help! This is actually a cameo by Kevin McCarthy, the lead in the original 1956 version, where he delivered a nearly identical line. Unfortunately, it's a brief role, as he is chased down Eddy Street by a crowd and found dead in front of the Hamlin Hotel, oh which still exists to this day. Going back to the modern-day corner of Eddie and Leavenworth, we see the Black Cat, a swanky jazz supper club that I had the pleasure of discovering last year. Hopefully, I will be able to do so again. Interestingly, Matthew refers to this corner as Leavenworth and Turk in the movie. Matthew and Elizabeth then jump to the Richmond District in the northwest part of the city, specifically to a bookstore on Clement Street for a launch by celebrity psychologist Dr. Kibner, played by Leonard Nimoy. There, they also meet up with Matthew's grouchy friend Jack Belichick, played by a young Jeff Goldblum. The fictitious mud baths owned by Belichick and his wife were also filmed in the inner Richmond district off of Clement. After our heroes stumble upon the disturbing truth of the pod's replication and replacement of humans, the quartet of still-human protagonists retreat to Matthew's home. A view looking downhill at the Transamerica Pyramid suggests a location in North Beach, more specifically on Montgomery Street up Telegraph Hill. Using the images of the facade of the house and other cues, I was able to pinpoint the exact block on Montgomery Street near Montague Place, and later confirm the location as 1227 Montgomery Street. They enlist the help of Dr. Kibner, only to realize he, he is, is one, one of the pod people. people. The next day, Matthew dozes off and almost falls victim to a fully mature pod. The remaining humans, who are quite possibly the last humans left in the city, make an escape down Montgomery Street and then jump a few blocks away to the famous Filbert Street Steps and Napier Lane. After descending the steps, they arrive at Pier 33, 
where they evade a mob of pod people after Belichick sacrifices himself. Elizabeth and Matthew then end up back in North Beach along a familiar stretch of Broadway, where they hail a cab to take them to the airport. They immediately pass the Condor Club, Roaring Twenties, and Hungry Eye, which we also saw in Dirty Harry. Another fun cameo, the cab driver is Don Siegel, the director of the 1956 version. Unfortunately, they are stopped at the Broadway tunnel by a roadblock of pod people, and once again find themselves on the run. After returning to the health department at Grove Street and witnessing a disturbing hybrid of banjo player and dog, they then track a massive pod distribution operation to Pier 70 on the central waterfront. Pier 70 is another favorite photogenic spot of mine, with warehouses, art studios, and formerly derelict buildings. Some have been rehabilitated into trendy office space as of last year, but the main building used by the pod people, Building 6, remains a beautiful ruin. Here, Elizabeth succumbs to the pod duplication and an enraged Matthew attempts to destroy the pod operation in the building, and clearly inflicts a lot of damage before being chased to the docks outside the building. In the final scenes, we follow Matthew up Market Street by Civic Center Station and the Whitecomb Hotel, eventually returning to his office at 101 Grove Street. He then goes outside to the plaza in front of City Hall. It is near here that Matthew is seen by a still human Nancy Belichick, and then the final blood-curdling scream. This ending suggests that all is lost, not only for our protagonists and the city, but all of humanity, and it still frightens us 40 years later. Do you have thoughts about Invasion of the Body Snatchers and its connections to San Francisco? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.